now we'll see the next topic vermiform appendix or also we can call as abdominal tonsil now we'll see the external features of appendix see this is the appendix it is a warm like diverticulum why it is warm like means it produces some things on its body really this is the peritoneal fold which is attached to the one end of appendix actually this is very shorter compared to the length of the appendix so by its attachment it produces some kinks on its body this is an appearance like a worm so that's why we can call as vermiform appendix this triangular peritoneal fold we can call it as a meso appendix this is the worm like diverticulum arising from the posteromedial aspect of the cecum in the cecum we studied that both this is the folds of ilium ilium and c appendix both they will open at the posteromedial wall of the cecum only it, its opening is exactly 2 cm below the opening of iliocecal orifice this appendix and it is also suspended by a triangular peritoneal fold known as meso appendix if you see the length of the appendix it is 2 to 20 cm in its length average it is 9 cm diameter is 5 mm usually it is very narrow and it is obliterated up to the mid adult life now we'll see the surface anatomy this is the mcburney's point if we draw an imaginary line from the umbilicus to the anterior superior iliac spine we can divide this line into medial two third and lateral one third so the junction between the lateral one third and the medial two third that is the point where we feel the maximum tenderness and this is the location of the base of the appendix this point is known as a mcburney's point at this site only we can feel the maximum tenderness now we'll see the parts of the appendix which is the base here the cecum is somewhat lifted and you can observe this is the base and this is the body this is the tip and this triangular peritoneal fold is meso appendix so first we'll know about the base as i already mentioned that this cecum is also furnished with the tinea coli like large intestine so all the tinea coli i told you that anteriorly tinea libra posteriorly another two are there tinea mesoconia and tinea omentalis all these three tinea bands they converge at the base of the appendix so to trace the appendix if you trace the tinea coli all the three bands they'll converge at the base of the appendix so that we can assume that we reach to the appendix so this is the point known as base next we'll see the body this is a narrow tubular with a lumen this lumen it as it is having a lumen it is open into the posteromedial aspect of the cecum and this is the tip which is least vascular and next this is the meso appendix this appendicular artery will passes towards the meso appendix which is a triangular peritoneal fold through that peritoneal fold only it attains its blood supply now we'll see the different positions of the appendix it can be compared with the hover of a clock so this is the different position of appendix in different persons so first one see this is the outline this is the retrocecal position which is seen behind the cecum it is 65% in individuals next one by the side of the cecum this position is known as paracecal position it is nothing but a 11 o'clock position next one this is the midinguinal position this is known as a 6 o'clock position it is directed towards the inguinal vein next this is the ilium in front of the ilium this is the preilium behind the ilium is the posterior it is compared to the 2 o'clock position splenic position at that region it is pointed towards the spleen so it is known as a splenic position next one this is the 3 o'clock position promnotaric so it is directed towards the sacrum sacral promnotary so that's why it is known as a promnotaric position or 3 o'clock position and this is the pelvic position in 15% of the individuals we can see this pelvic position or 4 o'clock position 6 o'clock position this is 65% this is 65% and this is 15% and this pelvic position is 20% next one we'll see the blood supply of the appendix it is also same like that of a cecum see this is the appendicular artery appendicular artery which is also a branch of iliocolic artery this appendicular artery 
it passes behind the ileum and it enters into the meso appendix it supplies the appendix there this appendicular artery is the end artery so when there is a any arterial stenosis will be there, is there then this appendix is necrosed here because it is an end artery or when there is an any thrombus in this artery this tip and the entire appendix it is it undergoes necrosis venous drainage it is corresponding to the same arteries as it is drained into the iliocolic vein and superior mesenteric vein ultimately drains into the portal vein the lymph lymphatic drainage it is drained by the upper and lower group of iliocolic lymph nodes so here this is the appendix and this is the ilium these are the iliocolic group of lymph nodes now supply this is by sympathetic and parasympathetic sympathetic by the tendon segment of spinal cord supplied through superior mesenteric plexus parasympathetic by the vagus so the pain when there is a pain in the appendix tenderness in the appendix the pain we can felt around the umbilicus also because the same dermatome it is also seen around the umbilicus t10 so the referred pain will be seen around the umbilicus also the structure of an appendix so from inside to outside first one is this is the lumen which is lined by the mucosa submucosa muscularis externa serosa now we'll see the mucosa which is lined by the simple columnar epithelium with a number of goblet cells and some enteroendocomatin endocomatin cells so this is the lamina propria and this is the muscularis interna this is the submucosa coat having number of lymphatic nodules so by the presence of this number of lymphatic nodules it is known as abdominal tonsil after submucosa we'll see the muscularis externa in the muscularis externa one special feature is there this there are some few gaps between the muscular layers so by the presence of this gap the infection from the lumen can be transferred to the through the through these gaps and it prefer it sometimes it pursues a coat and it enters into the peritoneum because peritonitis so this feature the feature having the this feature exactly having the gaps between the muscularis layer it is known as a hiatus muscularis and last layer this is the serosa layer nothing but a peritoneal fold it covers entire appendix development here as all you know that cecum and appendix both they, they develop from the cecal bud see here this is the cecal bud this is the mid cut loop the cecal bud arises from the post arterial segment of primitive mid cut so this is the post arterial segment normally sometimes when there is a development of is there any abnormalities in the development of cecal bud we can see this positions undescended cecum and appendix will be seen and there is a agencies of appendix means improper development of appendix and sometimes we will see the left sided appendix will be there and double appendix will be seen this is the clinicals the inflammation of appendix is known as appendicitis so here you have to know there are some predisposing factors to cause this appendicitis those are as it is supplied by an end artery this appendicular artery is an end artery so it is more prone for this necrosis and sometimes some fecolith feces which is hardened like a stone and it is deposited in the lumen of this appendix and it causes severe pain and in rare cases from that lumen that fecolith substance it passes towards the gaps which are seen between the muscularis externa it passes through that hiatus sorry hiatus muscularis and then it pierces this serosa layer and it reaches the peritoneum to cause the peritonitis and sometimes it will be resided in the lumen itself and it causes a severe pain which can be referred by the presence of these three signs and symptoms that is known as a murphy's triad having pain vomiting temperature and we'll see the that condition we'll see the tenderness severe pain will be seen at the mcburney's point and first the pain is seen around the umbilical region as it is supplied by the same dermatome of that appendix t10 so then afterwards it is slightly it settles down towards the right iliac fossa that kind of sign is known as a rolling sign so you have to remember these features 
this appendix it is supplied by an endarter and it is having number of lymphatic nodules in the submucosa coat that's why it is known as abdominal tonsil presence of hiatus muscularis so these are some of the predisposing factors to cause the appendicitis see here this is the appendix and this is the meso appendix here it is inflamed it discomplete the session of cecum and appendix thank you